Let's understand how to assign a value to a variable in Cypress. What I want to do here in this website is to get the small model text that I have here. So I can, after I click on this button, make sure that this title has the same information that has this button over here, right? Even when there is an M um, difference, right? This M is a, uh, in lowercase and this one is in uppercase. In this video, you are going to understand aliases, closures, and also uh, well, variables in Cypress. So please watch it until the end because it is gonna be a lot of information for you for free. So please subscribe and let a like to Jog Media if you wanna keep learning about Cypress IO. Okay, so I'm gonna come here to my Visual Studio code. I have this project here. Uh, as you can see, uh, well, the first thing that I have to do uh, is it is a describe. This describe is gonna call, for example, uh, variables and uh, aliases. Okay, aliases over here. Demo. <laughs> I like that word. Then the the next thing that I wanna do, right, is uh, before each over here, and this before each is gonna have a callback function here, which is gonna have a site visit because I wanna uh, well, visit this website every time that I will create a knit, right? And a simple test case. So what, I, what I'm gonna do here is a knit, right? And I want to show you a, well, something that is very common. And well, if you are not related with asynchronous code, you can have this a scenario and probably you can be confused. And well, the, the thing is that the return variables misconception okay from another tools for example with test cafe we could do something like this we can create a constant and well for example create a, a variable name cause a small model text right now we could think that if i use a scigat a command look for the button right the button uh, in selector over here which is could be something like this id here right mm-hmm and I get the text with the, or actually try to get the text with this method, the, that text. Well, the, the conception or what you can think about this is that if I create or actually I make a silog here and I try to, well, get the, the text from the constant, right? Um, well, you, you might think that probably you can have the, um, well, the, 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 the text, right, from the, from the operation and as you can see here well it is trying to it is it is saying that scigat that text it is not a function right it is just a chainable um, command so there there are workarounds to to try to do this kind of stuff right assign variables to a constant and then you can try to make sure that the text that you get it is according to another action so i'm gonna try to explain you a workaround to get this done okay i'm gonna just comment this code and i'm gonna create another it over here right now uh, i'm gonna create this it and it is gonna be called for example for example closures and variables okay I'm gonna try to explain you what is a closure. So let me go ahead and, and try to do this. What I wanna do uh, now is basically uh, tell you that if you're familiar with native promises with, uh, well, Cypress works with the then command uh, in the same way. What I'm trying to explain you is that, for example, if I come here and I make a scigate over here, and then I try to get this uh, selector, which is the button that I have in the UI here, right? A small model. And I want to get that particular text saved in a variable. What I have to do is to use the then command over here. Now I can play with this as a, well, as a promise. And I can use, or I can try to do a callback function here. And the value, or actually the object, it is gonna be is gonna be saved in a variable. In this case, I can call this variable as I want. For example, model button. Okay. Now, every single action that I can do here is gonna be triggered, or I or I have to bind that action to this callback function here. So, for example, if I uh, now I can do the constant stuff, create a variable here and name this, for example, a small model text. And now if I try to 
do this stuff model button which is the callback function and the object that i have right now right and i try to get the text over here you're gonna see that probably if i do a psylock over here i'm gonna get the thing that i want right let me just execute this again as you can see it is getting the the object or the or the button here and now it is displaying the lock this the small a uh, model text that it has inside but we have to use the then command in order to get the yielded stuff that it has inside right so that's basically what i tried what i'm trying to explain to you so the next step that i want to um or actually something else that i want to tell you is that by using callback functions we have created a closure basically a closure enable us to keep references around around to refer to work done in previous commands so, so that's basically using this then we are creating closures and every single uh, stuff that we do inside the closure well um actually uh, or or let's think about this in different way the commands outside of the then command it is not going to be executed or run until the well, all the nested commands finish so we have a kind of synchronous uh, actions over here inside the closure right so um i want to do something else right as i told you at the beginning of this video i wanted to click on this button and then make sure that the text of the button is matching this title of this model right um so i'm gonna do that i'm gonna make a sigh i'm sorry i'm gonna reference the model button over here right the the, the same object that i have and i'm gonna make or perform a click over here once i have done the click it is going to open up the model right and now i'm going to try to get this title over here using the id for example right so i'm going to come here and uh, well i'm going to make a get over here in order to get the id of this element now i'm referencing that title i want to use the contains uh, method in order to try to do a kind of assertion using contains i want to make sure that the the text is the same one that i have uh, saved in my variable over here right so i want to come here and make sure that it the the title contains this text over here however if you check this and actually if i execute this again let me show you it is gonna fail right because uh, if you notice that the small model and the m is in lowercase but however this uh, title has the model in a uppercase so there is a way to well try to do this or avoid the case sensitive stuff with contains and it is an special command over here which is for example match case right and then we have to set the uh, the, the key or actually the value of the key as false and now it is gonna avoid or well it is gonna compare the content but it is not gonna be case sensitive right so it is a, just a workaround that we have in this case now the, the video has a lot of, a lot of content that you want to know so i'm gonna try to explain you um another thing that you might think let let, let me just give you this example if i create another it over here and i try to well i'm gonna create a name for this and um, i'm gonna name this context miss a conception too right because you might be thinking now i have this um, variable here the small model text and uh, probably i can uh, well access the value using silo here and just referencing that variable that i have created probably you may or you may not or you may have the the answer of how you can achieve that right so i'm going to try to explain you uh, the workaround to to share the context between two different it's so uh, as you can see it is not working at all it is saying that the small model text is not defined of course right since it is a constant and well it is respecting the the block a uh, well hierarchy right so i'm gonna try to explain you how to achieve that okay i'm gonna come here it is gonna be very simple i promise very simple and very quick um what i'm gonna do is uh, explain you what is an alias basically alias allows you to save 
the value or the yielded value of an object using the command s okay so i'm gonna create an init here and it is gonna be named alias demo for example okay now the next thing that i want to try to explain you is that i'm gonna use a scigit in order to get well the same stuff right i'm gonna try to uh, get the the selector for this model over here so i'm gonna mm, check that with the id and now well the thing that i want to do is an invoke okay with an invoke, we can call different jQuery methods, right? In this case, I wanna try to get the text of that particular button. Now that I have the text, I have to use the word S in order to, um, well, kind of name this alias variable. So if if I come here and call this invoke um, text, now if I make or create another it over here, which is gonna be sharing context okay you are gonna see that if i use a silog now and i try to enter or get the value of this uh, button over here but referencing the alias it is gonna work and there is something interesting here that i'm gonna try to explain you this very quick let me show you um the, the way to access a uh, an alias is using this and then the name of the alias that you have provided so probably it is not going to work and I'm going to explain you why, okay? If I execute this again in Cyprus, you're going to see that probably it is going to, it, it is not going to work. And I'm going to try to explain you why. As you can see, um, it is saying that the context misconception is getting a, um, a problem right over here. It is saying that Scilog small model text is not working as expected. So, uh, it is probably cause, um, let me see why, uh, why I'm not watching alias, the alias it over here, I'm not sure, it should be working man, let me see what is happening, alias demo, I'm not sure why it's not working, hmm. Okay, the, the thing that I want to explain you is that aliases doesn't work with, or actually don't work with uh, arrow functions. So the first thing that I'm going to do is change this code to, well, to the old standards of function syntax, okay? Now, let me see if it works, because, ah, okay, as you can see here, the alias demo is now executed. And let me show you this, all right? If, if I come here and I take a look of the invoke command, it is saying that it is getting the text, right? And at the at the part at the right part of this command, you can see that there is the alias name, right? And if I inspect this stuff with the uh, Chrome browser, right, with the developer tools, you can see that if I click on this um, invoke over here, you can see that well, it is saying that we are invoking the, the function text of jQuery probably, and well, the yielded stuff that we have is the text of a small, a small a model. That's basically what we are trying to alias, right? The, the yielded stuff that we have inside of this uh, response, okay? And then if I come to the it, uh, the next it, which is sharing context, you can see that I was capable to lock the small model text that I will get from the alias in the past it. Now we are sharing context, right? And that's very cool. Let me just give you another alternative because there is another way and it is very interesting. Um, well, the thing that I'm gonna do is pretty the same stuff, right? I'm gonna access the element over here, but instead of using invoke, we are also gonna use then to give you this alternative. And if I access with the callback function again, again, for example, model bottom over here, and I do a, this, the, well, something else. Let me just show you this. Um, what I'm gonna do is uh, create a constant as we did before, right? And it's gonna be named, for example, a small uh, model text over here. And then we are gonna access again the model button stuff with the text command that we have with jQuery, right? So um, probably if I do a silog, of, of course, it is gonna be displaying these, the text that we have inside of the, uh, of the button, right? But 
the thing that I want to do is share this text that we have inside of the den, right? Inside of the closure. The thing that I can show you right away, let me see if I'm recording correctly. I'm sorry for this. <laughs> I'm going to do a um, side wrap, okay? This is an interesting command that we can, uh, well, make a video in the future. Please let me know in the, in the comment section if you would like to check more about the grab command. But you can, uh, well, grab this small model text variable that I have here and I can access or actually share the context using also the aliases, using S, okay? And using S, you can well come here and name this, for example, grab text over here. Okay, now that I have done this, well, I can share the context as well with the another it. So I can do the same stuff here, Psylocke, and then I can use the, this word in order to reference the alias of grab text over here. Okay, and probably if I execute this again, I'm gonna get the expected results since you can see that now I have the first lock with which probably is this one. And I actually can try to be more specific with this invoke result. And then I can be more specific with another one, right? I know that we have back tick second back stuff, but I'm just trying to do this in all way. <laughs> uh, grab result, okay? Perfect. So if I come here and execute it again, this, well, you are going to see that, well, that's basically, we are returning the, the or sharing the context of the invoke and also the grab. And we are well mixing all this stuff that we have reviewed in this video to understand closure, variables, aliases, and sharing the context between them. So thank you very much for watching the video. This was Young Media. Please subscribe and let a like. Please let me in the comment section below if this video helped you out. And I hope that we can keep learning about Cypress together. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.